Hi, I am Astrid, I'm Wattle and Wool, and welcome to my channel. I come to you from Western Australia, I live here in Perth, I have a cat who sometimes wanders in, I love to read and knit, watch a lot of trash TV, and I am a high school teacher. I would like to pay my respects to the people of the Noongar country, the Aboriginal land on which I stand, and pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. So today I've got a finished object. I don't know if you can tell. Um, just this, just this, it's fine. This I knit in three weeks. So many details, so much stuff to tell you, so many ends not even woven in. I think I just revealed some there. Um, so let's get into today. And I love it. So I saw this on Instagram and I was like, wow, I need to knit this. Like I, I need it either as a test knit or just like a real life knit. <laughs> um, you know what I mean? Like I just had to have it. So I begged and begged and begged, like literally sent her so many messages and was like, hello, must knit. Hi, please let me knit this. Please let me test knit this. And then she was like, yeah, cool. So, like join my mailing link. And I was like, okay, done. Um, let me do this for you. Um, <laughs> so she finally, no, not finally. Um, she agreed to let me test knit this. And then I reached out to, uh, Chloe of Woolen Works. Um, and I said, hello, I am going to be knitting this and sent it to her. I was like, can you please, I love fairy bread. I love fairy bread, the yarn. Can you please, please, please send me like a sweater's quantity of it because I need to make something in this. And then um, at the time I had pink hair and I said, like, look, um, you figure out what the contrast color would be. So she sent me to good pink, which is this beautiful hot pink color. So I'm not going to reveal too much of the pattern because it is a paid for pattern. Um, but it is a very comfortable bomber style varsity jacket. Um, it's awesome. I did make a few mistakes and there's a few things that if I knitted it again, I would redo them a little bit differently, but I will tell you that. So it starts with a cast on, obviously, um, and then it is meant to be double knit, but I have been working on, oh, do I have it around here? <clears throat> I have been working on my brioche cowl. Um, so I'm up to the second colour. You can see it change just in there. So I've been working on my brioche cowl for so long that I just kind of forgot how to do double knit and did brioche knit instead, which isn't what I was meant to do. And the only way that I figured out I was doing it wrong is because the lovely Chloe of Woolen Works posted up a reel showing how she was knitting, doing double knitting, and I was like, oh, yeah, that's, I did my one wrong. <laughs> Whoops. So, um, yeah, so um, Chloe is doing her one of this in her, I think it's blur, blue, 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 purpley, beautiful color. Um, and her contrast is fairy bread. So we're like twins, but not twins, like sisters. That's it. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I figured I was doing it wrong, but I actually like the stretch for me personally. I have a, like, I definitely have a natural waist, but my stomach is also, you know, girl prefers chocolate over gym. What am I going to say? So I'm not exactly the slimmest, the skinniest, the kind of person. Um, and I don't really like something that's going to cut in at my waist. Even if I wear like a crop something it's generally a really loose overshirt um because I, I want it to kind of have that loose drapier flow so I don't like anything that's going to be really um cinched in I like the stretchiness of this look at that I love the stretchiness of this um and then looking at it in comparison to the double knit button band I'm really happy that I did accidentally make this a lot stretchier so it works for me um but I do wonder because I will try and put in a cutaway here, maybe, of me wearing it. 
Um, but you can see it's a little bit loose at the back. So I wonder if if I'd made the button the hem double knit instead of bruge, um, if that would have maybe stopped the weird triangly right up at the back. I don't know. But I have no idea. Then it is fisherman's rib. And let me tell you, fisherman's rib is not a quick knit. Not even close. And this is Aaron weight on like fives. And it was not quick. Um, so yeah, that was was a push. I felt so bad. So because Chloe was in um America and then she came to back to uh, Melbourne where she lives, because she was in America for so long. Uh, when I was texting her, she only came back on like the 6th of June and then she had to start dyeing everything and getting everything ready then. Um, and it just didn't give her a lot of time to actually get everything ready. And then it was cold because it's winter in Australia and that's what happens. And so it, nothing was really drying very fast. And then Australia posts were being dicks, to be perfectly honest. And um, once she sent this, I saw the tracking and it literally stayed in the depot for a week pretty much. I ended up calling them and just saying, this is an emergency. This is my work. It's not, but I said it was, um, just to try and get it there in time. And it only came like the Monday afternoon of a long weekend. So it didn't really arrive very fast at all. Um, so by the time I started working on it, people were posting in the group chat. They were like, Oh, I'm up to, you know, I've done the front bits or I'm up to the sleeves. And I was like, I'm casting on. <laughs> so I, I definitely felt like I was holding up the team, um, which made me feel a bit bad. The They are put together um, with this awesome seam. I actually, at first I tried to do the seam on the inside, but I don't like, look at my hands. I don't like how that looked. Um, and so I did rip it out and redo it on the outside. That was... I did it on a Zoom chat, like a knit night chat, um, and that was really fun. I met some awesome people and made some really cool new friends, so that was so much fun. Um, then we had options of either doing the button band and collar or the sleeves next. So I did the button bands, thinking that for the collar I could do both button bands, ignoring instructions, because honestly, I'm actually the worst at following instructions. I thought, because one button band you pick up from the bottom and the other one you pick up from the top and then you knit this one down and this one up. And I was like, well, why can't I pick them both up from the bottom and just reverse the instructions and do them both up and then I'd have enough stitches live for the collar and I wouldn't have to pick up stitches because it would already be there and blah, 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 blah. Um, I tried it three different ways. It didn't work. Turns out, hint, hint for me, because um, I'm sure everyone else actually knows this, when a designer writes instructions in their pattern, it's probably either the easiest or the most makes sense or the most methodical way of doing it. Um, I know for my patterns, when I do them, when I write them, I genuinely think about what is going to be the cast on, what's going to be the finishing that I think is going to look best. Yes, I love to experiment and I love to try new things. Often my patterns like the brioche um, cowl and originally it was a scarf. Sometimes they're because I completely experiment and I'm like, hey, that looks cool. Write it down. So that scarf was literally the first time I ever did brioche properly. But I did research and I did think about how to do it properly before I decided to write it as a pattern and send it out into the universe. So you'd think that I, as a designer, know this. And yet when I'm doing a test in, I'm like, I can do it myself. I can't. That's why you follow patterns. Um, not yelling at you, yelling at me through this. So I did, I gave in to the correct way of doing it. Um, I knit the button bands, did the collar. When I pick up stitches, I found that if I just picked them up, so I don't want to, um, this is, like I said, it's a paid for pattern. I'm really trying not to give away too many details, but you pick one up and then you yarn over to be able to make that double knit because you've got to do, um, on essentially like ribbing, but not ribbing, but ribbing. Um, and so when I picked it up, that yarn over, it made it super loose. And I did not love how loose that was. I tried it at first. Actually, I did it on the pockets um, is probably the best way to show you. Um, again, you pick one up, yarn over, pick up yarn over, like knit one yarn over, knit one yarn over. 
and I just found that it was too loose and it was like this pocket bit was separated from the actual pocket and I really didn't like that. So when I picked up and then did a yarn over on the return, as I did the yarn over, I actually slipped into the stitch below and just pulled up like that bar. Um, so if you think you've got V, how do I do this? All right. V and V. So V, V. So I've knit one, yarn over, knit one, right? So then as I'm going on the way back, I'm obviously purl one or whatever it is. And then I'm going to knit into this one and I would pick up the bar that sits in here. I'd pick up this bar and connect the two. So it just tightens them a little bit. Not like this, obviously, but you know, it makes them a little bit closer, makes them a little bit nicer. I hope that instruction made some sort of sense. I don't think it did, but that's all right. Um, it definitely made it easier for me and I like the look of it so much better. I don't even know if that's what you're meant to do, um, but it is what I did and I, yeah, I much prefer the look of it. Um, things that I, so that was all my mistakes. Oh, there, I also, I did the back. This was when I had to, so I did this seam on the back, um, inside out, thinking I would like it more, realised I didn't. Then tried to pick up for the edge of the, um, sleeves, because it's all, it's amazing. Like, there is minimal seaming, minimal sewing. This is such a good pattern for people like me who hate all the extra fluff. Um... So when you pick up stitches, um, she gives you an amount that you've got to pick up, which is awesome. But I definitely didn't have that amount. And I realized that my back was a good two inches shorter than the front. So I undid the cast, let, I undid the seam. I undid, yeah, this seam. I unadded the stitches and then I re, like I added on another two inches on the back. Um, I kind of wish I'd added on more. I was pretty, I was feeling really behind and feeling really rushed. I do though wish that I'd added on more stitches, uh, like more rows to the back because I still feel like it's quite cropped and it's just less something that, like, I think for a bomber jacket, like a really truly comfy one, I'd want it to be a bit more hip height and this is a little bit above. It's still a bit more maybe natural hip. It's not natural waist, but maybe more natural hip height instead of like, you know, chunky hip height. Um, yeah, so I still, I absolutely love it and I will wear it all the time. Um, but yeah, so I wish I'd put a little bit more length into the back, just thinking about it. Although I also haven't blocked this and I know it probably will grow as I wear it and block it. Um, the sleeves are huge. So these are super comfy, super puffy. Um, so squishy. I wore it at work today and all my kids were like, Miss, you finished it. So I've been walking around at lunch, like knitting on it. Um, and they were so excited and I was like, yeah, feel it. Like feel the squish. And everyone was like running up to me and feeling it. Um, this is fairy bread. I think I've already said that. Um, the colorway and a lot of students were like, Miss, you look like an ice cream. You look like fairy bread. You look, you know, like sprinkles. And I was like, yes, this is my life. I love this. So that was awesome. Um, it took me, oh Lord, it took me so long. Keep in mind, this is like middle of, um, end of term, like term literally finished today. Um, so this is in the middle of end of term. It's in the middle of report writing and, um, parent interviews and getting kids to just finish off their tests. Um, and talking to the kids about their grades before they get them for the first time, um, to make sure that they're prepared for the whatever mark they get. So there was lots and lots and lots going on every day. I would just come home exhausted and then try and knit another inch or two. So these needed to be 14 and a half inches. Um, I kind of wish I did them a little bit shorter because they are so big. They definitely like my arm kind of stops like here. And so there's a bit of a wiggle. There's a little wiggle room. But because it's super cozy and thick and I am really glad that I sized down for these sleeve cuffs. Um, and I made sure to pull really tightly with that double knitting. So I love the balloon cinched in-ness of them. Um, again, I wonder if they needed to be so long, but I can push them up really nice and high. So pretty okay. The only other thing I would do again if I, I would not do if I did this again, is the pockets. I find the pockets kind of flare out a little bit. They're a bit, the placket, like the this bit, is just a bit too big for the pockets. So I would 
do it maybe on a 4.5 instead of a 5. I would, yeah, size down. I would do something. Um, maybe even add on a few less stitches. Um, just so that there's less puckering and floopiness. But I love it. I absolutely love it. It is so comfortable. It's so warm. It is a little bit heavy, but I mean, this is a cup of uh, almost a kilo of <laughs> um, Aran Waite Merino. I did all of the edges, um, all of the ends, that's the one. I did all the ends so I could take photos of it and then any of the ends that are inside, I didn't care. So some of them are nicely woven in and others, like I'm pretty sure that I've got some underarm sleeve ends. There we go, there's some more. They're all just like, and then this little one keeps poking through as tuck them back in. So this is my finished object and it is so comfy and beautiful. Um, it's got pockets, which you can never go wrong with pockets. And yes, I'm, I'm so happy. I'm also really grateful. <clears throat> I technically finished this a week late because I did start a little bit late because of all the other problems. And to be fair, I knew when the deadline was and I probably shouldn't have requested to test knit it if I was at all worried to meet the deadline. And that was my bad and I feel really bad about that. Luckily, Phoebe is amazing and has, she's just the best person to test knit for. Um, but yeah, I felt a bit guilty um, where I got it done last night. Like literally, yeah, finished it off last night. Um, and then I made a cute little reel. <laughs> I'm sure you've seen it on my Instagram. I am at bottle and dot wool. Um, and it was adorable. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, so I've been wearing this today, but I am really grateful that I had the chance to knit this and that Phoebe didn't hate me because I was late, which I'm so grateful for. I'm sure she's gonna do a whole, she, she does these awesome vlog style um, knitting diaries and I'm sure she's gonna have one up about the bomber.com because it's just so cool. So this is my finished object. Now, I, have a few more other things to show you. I have a lot of acquisitions because it's actually been a while since I showed you things. Um, so I hope you don't mind. Um, and I've got a couple of works in progress, but they all use the acquisition to show you. So I'm going to go through the acquisitions first and then I'm going to show you what I'm making. Um, if you don't want to see acquisitions, I'm sorry. Um, I understand. I wish you well, but if you do stick along with me and let's see how we go. All right, so what am I going to do? There's no order. <clears throat> okay, so first up, these are going to rustle. I'm sorry. I'll take them out. First up, I went to, oh, I should put in. Hopefully by now, um, editing me has put in the little vlogs I did of me going to the um, Knits uh, craft show, craft craft exhibition. I can speak in English. All right, as always with vlogging, I never know where to look. Um, I have just gotten my coffee from Fika, my local. It is pouring with rain, but I'm gonna go to a craft show, so come with me. So smart girl here did not bring an umbrella. This is the beautiful shirt by Pamimpi, the label, um, by my friend Jess Nits and Sews. Um, and it is stunning, but it is not really meant to be wet. So, I mean, you know, like no clothes are meant to be wet. You know what I mean? <laughs> so let's go. I'm walking into the craft show. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna look like a bedraggled little rat. Yay!
I've been practicing. <laughs> massive deal as well so it's like a big step the, the oh I believe you <laughs> I think that's why I do get as nervous because I'm like well I just have to focus on being ready <laughs> so how long have you been dying for all right I'm now walking back to my car and into the sun so if it looks like I can't see it's because I can't <laughs> um but that was the loveliest experience I had so much fun so there was a girl there um, and it was her first ever yarn show or like craft show and apparently yesterday she basically sold out of half her stock which is so amazing and then there was um, Dying For You, Jessica who, oh my god she recognised me I was like hey I'm Astrid, I'm Waddle and Wool she's like I know, I've watched you on Instagram and I was like oh. I'm like, I'm like famous now <laughs> so that gave me a little ego boost and then yeah, some people told me really good sewing and really good crochet um, for my knitting, which was confusing, but I took it as a compliment. Um, and just lovely, amazing people. Some people really wanted to like build relationships and <sighs> I love knitting people or crafty people in general. They're just so warm and open and caring and I love it. So this is um, Majestic Merino and they had some of the most beautiful um hand dyed cotton embroidery threads cotton i think they're cotton stranded cotton so my lovely friend mel enjoys cross stitch oh there's two more my beautiful friend mel enjoys cross stitch and um we were talking about it and then i went to this and i was like oh wow like there are some really really pretty ones here um and so I grabbed a whole lot did not have a price on it that's my one thing I wish they had a price because I kind of got sticker shock when she gave me the total and then I felt awkward like I couldn't say no because yeah um so next time I wish that I had seen the price so I could have calculated appropriately but that's okay that's right things happen and these are in my hand for a very good reason so the colors are Fox Gloves, Blue Moon, Ooh, my hand's shaking, can you, okay, I'm going to do the whole podcaster like hand in front of the thingy thingy because I actually don't know if you can see this, so in front of my face, that is Fox Gloves, this is Blue Moon, I'm trying to check that it's actually focusing the right thing. I got two of this one, one for me and one for Mel, because I knew that these were just so beautiful. They're called Sherbet. I feel like they kind of match my nails as well. They... See, I can't tell. That's the problem. And then I got... Yes. This one is Coral Cove, which is this beautiful coral pink. This one is the least um, colour changey. I feel like this is more, not a flat colour, but it's the most consistent colour. Um, this one is Jack Frost, which you can see that it's like a silver and then like an almost minty silver. I don't know what the colour is. It's beautiful. And then Ashdale is this one, which I just want to go ham and make all the little flowers and daisies with this because I think that would just be so beautiful. And then this one is Caramel Fudge, which I feel like is the big sister version of Ashdale. I feel like they, they deserve to be together. So these are the embroidery cotton, stranded cotton that I got 
Um, now, my friend Mel, pretty sure she wanted at least these. <laughs> pretty sure she wanted these three. So, foxgloves, blue moon, and sherbet. And then I'm going to add in one more for her. And I feel like she needs coral. Just to give a bit of that pink, like a bit of brightness in that palette. I feel like if I added the Jack Frost, which, yes, is beautiful, but I feel like it dulls it down a little bit. I want that pink in there for her instead. Because if you know Mel, she is just the brightest and happiest person. Um, she's, yeah, she's just wonderful. So this is going to be for Mel for my friend's birthday. Um, oh, it was her birthday two days ago. So these are for her. Hi, Mama. Good. Just a little podcast before I go. You're making one? Yeah. Okay. You, you can just be rolling. Yeah. Thanks. It's all right. I can edit. It's fine. Thank you. Hello. 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 <laughs> um, so funny. I was watching a podcast and there was, oh, it's this really cute older British woman. Um, she's adorable. And she was like on it. And the kids thought it was you because the, the setup looked behind me looked similar. And they're like, is that your mum? Like, does your mum have a YouTube? And they're like, what's your mum's YouTube? And they're getting really excited. And I was like, no, guys, calm down. And then they're like, what does your mum even look like? And I was like, my mum's so pretty. <laughs> so I pulled up the picture of you in the Beth's um, top that we took outside with all the flowers. And I was like, see, look at my mum. Isn't she pretty? And then they're like, yeah, your mum is. And then they kind of remembered that they're talking about my mum. And they're like, uh-huh. And then all the girls are like, oh, your mum's so pretty. And then Aww. one of the little boys, so he's like year eight, he sees, and he goes, your mum doesn't even look that old. I was like, I know, right? And he was like, yeah, like your mum's. And then again, realised he's talking about my mum to me and went, very nice. Thank you. Very nice. <laughs> well, tell them thank you. That made my day. <laughs> so after that brief interlude with Mama, um, Yes, so those are the uh, Majestic Merino. Yeah, Majestic Merino um, yeah, um, stranded cotton hand dyed that I bought for my friend and my friend Mel. My, me and my friend Mel. I then went looking around and I found some awesome like stalls. So the first one I went to was Dying For You. And I said, look, I'm Astrid, I'm Waddle and Wool, can I quickly like video your store? And she's like, yeah, I follow you on Instagram. And I was like, oh, I am famous, I am so cool. So that was really fun. <laughs> um, and then I'll tell you about that in a second. So then I was walking around like filming stuff and I saw another stall. Um, and this one was so pretty and her name was Cable Tie Knits. And I was like, wow, like these are really cool. And apparently it was her first ever stall and like her first ever show and she pretty much sold out of her stock. Like it was a two day show and on the first day she sold out of like half, which was so good for her. So again, thinking about my brioche everything, I'm thinking I want to do a video tutorial um, with my brioche scarf. And I will do... Um, yeah, I was, I was thinking, I was thinking about how to do it and I was thinking that would be the best thing to do. So I saw these two and I just immediately went, oh my goodness, they need to come home with me. How beautiful are they? So this one is truly madly deeply. It's kind of that like burgundy merlot kind of color. It's a little bit too red on here. It's a bit darker in real life. And then this one, this is showing up a lot more pink than it really is. It's a bit more um, rusty orange. But this one is called This Old Love. So they're both in her Bravo Aran weight, which is 100% superwash extra fine merino. Um, approximately 166 metres to 100 grams. And just these two together. Like, yes, this is a brioche. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking I'm going to do, um, yeah, like I'm going to uh, video everything of it. So the I could cast on, um, the initial brioche stitches, the increases, but I'm going to essentially video like an extra one. So it's not going to be quite the same as the, um, the actual shawl because I've only got one of each of these instead of having the 24 advents. Um, and so I'm thinking of doing this slightly differently. So it'll be more of a, um, 
like a shorter, wider shawl than the big, long, um, asymmetrical one. Um, yeah, so I've got to figure out how to do that without it sounding too confusing. Um, and I've also got to, I don't know, maybe I won't even just do it as like a, this will be the free version and then the other one maybe you pay to get or something. I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm still figuring that one out. YouTube, the world of YouTube is confusing, but these are not confusing. These are yarn and these will be, will be very soon a project. Very soon. Then I have, where am I going to put these? Everything is everywhere. Then there was this one. So this was in her, um, what did she call them? Her orphan skeins. So they're like um, little skeins that don't quite work and weren't quite perfect, need a bit of love. So this was originally 30, 33. I got it for 30. And it is Brushed Baby Suri Alpaca Blend 7525. Uh, Suri Alpaca Silk Blend. 50 grams, 300 meters. And oh my goodness, it is so, so soft. It is so much fun. Um, This colorway, I don't even know if she's got a colorway. I think it just is. Yeah, I think it just is. But it's this beautiful cloudy gray. It's like silvery clouds and gray clouds. And I was thinking for some reason, when I bought this, I was like, you know what? I want to make a top with these as sleeves, like big balloon sleeves, but like a solid top. Still don't know if I'm going to do that because now that I kind of see it, I'm not sure. But the idea is really interesting. I have no idea really what I would make with this, but it was just too beautiful and exotic and interesting to let it not come home with me. Because it was an orphan and it needed a home. And now it's home with me. So that is this one here, the uh, Baby, Al Baby Suri Alpaca Silk Blend. And then what have we got next? Um, okay. So on Instagram, I, I, on the explore or for you page or no explore page. Um, I actually don't normally look at it, to be honest. I tend to just go to my feed. Sometimes I watch stories. I'm trying to get better at watching stories, but yeah, so I, I'm pretty lax with these. Oh crap. I don't know which one goes on where. Whoopsies. Let's say what color and then I could probably figure it out. Well, yep, here we go. Found you. All right. So I saw this brand called Dempster, Dempster. And I was like, wow, that is really cool. So what they do is they do, um, um, re like recycled fabric, but they wind them into hanks. Um, I'll get on. There you go. Okay. So I saw these, basically saw these big ones and I was like, wow, that is awesome. So this one here, this gray one is called chalk. It is citizen wolf recycled yarn, hundred grams, 165 meters. Um, they recommend five uh, millimeter, millimeter needle size. It's 10 ply, 10 ply Aran. And on the back, it actually tells you what it is made up of. So this is 45% Australian merino wool, 52% recycled cotton, and 3% recycled wool with traces of linen, viscose, and tencel. Reclaimed fibers derived from off-cut jersey scraps reclaimed from Citizen Wool's t-shirt factory in Sydney. So this is the chalk. This one is denim, and they've got slightly different percentages. This is 49% um, recycled cotton, 6% recycled wool. So they're just slightly different. And then I, yeah, so I saw those and I was like, wow, that is so cool. And then I found that they had like minis and these are all their colors of, ooh, stop breaking. Mm -hmm. All the different colors of their minis. Um, so in here you've got the chalk, double check that's chalk. Yep. Chalk denim. What's this gray one? Green one. Sage is like a, it's like a khaki army green. So we've got these three. This darker one is charcoal. And then this reddish one is musk. So these are five minis that came along with it. And I just think they are such a cool idea. Again, they've all got slightly different amounts of recycled 
um, things. So some of them, like um, this one is 32% cotton, 23% wool, whereas uh, this one is 44% cotton, 11% wool. So they all change a little bit, and I really like how clear the percentages are. Um, I like the idea of the recycling. Um, I just think it is amazing. It's such a clever idea. So, and then obviously like all knitters, weavers, um, fiber craft people can just reuse these and they're so cool. So I reached out to the guy who runs it and I said to him, Hey, like what I would love is I'm a, so I'm a high school teacher. I teach a lot about, um, sustainability and ethical produce. Um, my year nine program is actually about the industrial, industrial revolution. We talk about ethical branding, um, a lot of this sort of stuff. I would love to make like a pinup board of the information. And I said, is there a way that I could get sent some scraps? And he was like, yeah, absolutely. So he, this bag is full, like fairly full of scraps that they use that they then shred and then they recycle into these yarns. And this is like a little flow chart. So this one, it starts with the, what we do, um, and the steps to it. And then obviously this one goes back. Um, so they basically look at, um, they do pre-consumer textile waste, like scraps, offcuts, um, remnant fabrics, or they do post-consumer textile waste and textile waste. And I've seen on Instagram, they get stuff from like Salvo stores or like big charity halls. Um, and they send it to the fiber recovery mill, which turns textile waste back into fiber, um, using a mechanical system that requires no water, bleach, dye, or detergent and produces no chemical waste, which is amazing. They sanitize everything, sort it all. Um, they garn it, which is shredding down to a fine fibrous fleece. The fibers are then combed to separate and detangle them, being sanitized once more. And then it is spun into virgin, um, with virgin fiber and spun into yarn. Then it is sent back to them in Sydney where they can do, um, knitwear. So on his, um, on his Instagram page, there's a couple of, um, examples of his, um, his knitwear that he does, um, to kind of show it off. And so with the minis, I'm definitely going to do like a display board. I'm probably going to photograph photocopy that um and do it at work put it like pin it up into a display board but i'm thinking i would actually love to design something out of these that has the concept of recycling um so either reuse recycle something something to show that passage um and something two colored i think would be awesome i also want it to be really unisex um so i would say a cow but i don't know if many men wear cows so maybe a scarf something really simple, even mosaic knitting. Um, I don't know, but I just think these two would go really well together. They'd be really fun. Um, and I just, I, I so believe in the sustainability and the concept behind this. So they are Dempster. Um, I will, um, everything below will be linked. Um, and their Instagram is at Dempster as well. So I definitely recommend you checking them out. I think they're so cool. Okay. After, yep, that is all my, those acquisitions. Um, now I'm up to the more basic level acquisitions, but that's okay. We always like something basic. So, um, I'm going to Melbourne and Brisbane. I'm going to go, I'm going to knit while I tell you this. I am going to, uh, Melbourne to see one of my really close friends. She's basically like my work best friend. Um, and when she left last year, I just cried. I was so upset. So now I'm so excited to go see her. Um, and she's got this beautiful new house and I'm just, I'm so excited. So I'm going to go over to see her. She's a couple of hours outside of Melbourne. Um, she's in, she's not in, but she's near Ballarat. Um, so I'm going to jump on a train and like prime knitting time. She's like, I'm so sorry. I can come pick you up. I'm like, girl, I'm good. Like I've got stuff to do. I will be fine. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to go see her, spend a couple of days with her. So to knit for her, I will just put it up on the screen. I've got a black and white copy, but I'll put it up on the screen. 
I'm making this little mushroom fairy house crochet bag, which is so cute. So this I found when I was browsing Ravelry um, and Kim, my friend, she has like a veggie garden and I was thinking, well, if she ever wanted to pick herbs or just like a couple of little quick things, why not grab a bag and put them in a bag? Like that would be so cool. So I figured doing a little mushroom fairy house bag just ties in with her little cottage core. I grow vegetables in my house aesthetic. Um, and so I started it. Now, I am not a pro crocheter at all. I've only really crocheted a few things before, most of them being body parts, which <laughs> I think are really cool. <laughs> totally not safe for work, but so cool. So this is the base of the bag. I, it, the pattern now, it's by Savannah Pelletier, Pelletier, like Peloton, Pelletier. Um, and it looks really cute, but it's like, I think I'm the second project making it. So it is very untried, very untested. And I am also brand new to crochet. It doesn't have some explanations. Um, like one of them is BLO. And I don't know what that means. And because she doesn't have a glossary, I, I really don't know what that means. So just things like that. It does make it a little bit hard. And I'm kind of trying to figure out what this pattern is talking about. Um, I also, this is my first time ever following a pattern of crochet, so I'm really making it up. So you have to cast on with the, um, cast on 12 into a magic ring. Sorry, my voice is going. Can you tell it's the end of term? Um, <clears throat> cast on 12 in the, in the magic ring. I tried so many times to do this stupid magic ring, ended up just doing a slip knot and then just pulled the tail and was like, you know what? She's done. She's good enough. Um, so that's that bit. And then it basically just said, start increasing straight away. So the first round was, um, increase in every stitch. Then it was one increase, one increase, one increase. Um, <clears throat> and it started this puckering fabric. Also, I meant to be doing half double crochet, no double crochets in all of them. Um, and I didn't know what that was. So I just decided to do single crochet, which I'm actually really happy about because this is going to be the base of the bag. So I feel like I would like it to be a bit tighter, um, especially because it's going to be holding maybe tomatoes that you don't want bruised or, you know, chilies or whatever. So I feel like this makes more sense for it to be a little bit sturdier. Um, and I'm not unhappy with it at all. Also, can we just appreciate how good my tension is? This is my first real crochet ever. And this is so lovely. Like just the fabric is really nice. So yay me. Um, <clears throat> then I was thinking, oh crap. So it says I've got to do um, double crochet. I've only been doing single crochet. This means it's going to be like a million times smaller. This means I've got to now do more. So then I kept just increasing as I was going. Um, so I got up to every like do, um, single three, increase one, like increase in the, yeah, increase in the fourth. So it's, yeah, you know, so single crochet, single crochet, single crochet. And then the fourth one is like single and then an increase in that one. Um, I feel so weird, like knitting, I can just breeze through this language, but crochet is really, I understand how the fabric forms, forms and I understand how it's going to feel, but the actual reading it, I gets really confused. So <clears throat> I did the single crochet. I did it up to maybe six. Um, so do six and then increase um, and realize it was like, like this. It pretty much like this is the best it got. And I was like, okay, we are ripping this out. So I ripped it back to the third um, and then just started doing a single crochet around. So I would do an increase row and then just a, as it is row and increase row and as it is row. And I found that stabilized it a lot more. It, don't get me wrong, it is still <laughs> floppy. <laughs> um, but before it was a unusable piece of nothing like this, and now at least I can open it. So I'm quite happy with that. I'm up to the um, double crochet section, which I had to Google how to do. Um, but again, like, look how pretty. I'm just, I'm actually such a fan. I find this really nice. I'm really enjoying it. Um... 
I will make, I will, I'm trying to get better at my Ravelry. And so I've written down notes of what I've done to change this up. And I will be adding to my Ravelry page um, and adding any modifications and taking better pictures. So this is with Spotlight Yarn. <clears throat> Spotlight Yarn. So I got it from, it is Clarkhaven Country 8 Ply. I got it from Spotlight. Um, it is this white and beige kind of mild heathered look. Mild is probably better than heathered. Um, but it's really nice. And because the idea of it is to look like a mushroom. Um, so this is the base. And then I should have a red somewhere. Here we go. That's good. Flying crochet hooks. That's the red. <laughs> um, so that's, I got an extra white just in case. So that's going to be the two there. And then for the extra little details, I'm sure I've got some green somewhere anywhere. But I'm going to chuck this yellow in as well for like the door and the window and just any cute little extras. I think that'll be a really nice bag. Um, and it is meant to be, it's meant to be for foraging essentially. So it's meant to get a little bit grubby and a little bit silly. And yeah, I really like it. It's also meant to be machine washable. These are 100% um, wool. Um, it says gentle machine wash me. I'm easy care, which is why I got it. So I am hoping that they really are easy care because otherwise I will give her a bag that will be felted. Um, but I'm sure that'll help too. Why not? As long as it doesn't felt to itself. <laughs> um, yes. So that is the first thing. Now I leave tomorrow. I'm going to go, I'm going out tonight. Ooh, going out tonight. Um, and then I'm going to go to come back here sleep. Mum is going to wake me up in the morning because there is no way I will be waking up myself. Um, and I will drive her to the airport. Then I'll come back here, finish packing. Um, that's why I keep, like, I try to put stuff in my bed. And then I'm like, oh, there is so much already on there because there's just a whole pile of clothes. Um, and because, so Perth WA is um, 27 degrees latitude. Um, and then I think Melbourne is a little bit lower, maybe at 35 um, and then S Brisbane is higher. Oh, I'm not going to say 15. That's too high. Yeah, maybe 17-ish. So, um, it's different climates. So I was reaching out to the girls who live over there. Um, and I was like, oh my goodness, help me figure out what to wear. Um, and they were like, don't worry, it's cold. Like apparently Brisbane's still raining. So my family are in Gold Coast, which is a little bit south. Um, but I'm planning on meeting some knitting friends. So if you are in Melbourne or Brisbane, let me know. I've got dates that I'll be there. So we'll chat privately. I don't kind of don't want to like post it everywhere, but at the same time, if you are there, I'd love to meet you. Um, this is getting dark, so I'm going to have to hurry up. I'm sorry. This lighting, man. So that is my first, um, new work in progress. My second new work in progress is this one. This is the Petite Souffle by Penrose Knits. So Penrose has become soup. Laura from Pen Laura from Laura from Penrose Knits has become super popular. Um, she released her school run headband and mittens, and her um, souffle everything. So she's got like her souffle top souffle tea summer souffle chunky souffle souffle up the wazoo and now she's got a petite souffle so these are for um little kids um you should also check out her instagram she's got this adorable reel of um all these little kids running around in the souffles and they're just like mm, so cute so i am gonna go to brisbane after i go to melbourne and i'm gonna go see my family i have two nieces that i haven't met yet and I'm so excited to see them. So excited. And I thought, well, what could I, what can I bring them that is going to be a gift that is going to be honestly practical because you've always got to have a practical gift. And then I thought this pattern is just the cutest. And I've been seeing everyone knit the full um, adult versions. And I mean, children's knitwear is always so much faster. So I figured, why not? Let's jump on it. Let's jump on the trend and let's get to it. So I have two nieces, one is called Poppy and one is Willow. Willow is three, Poppy is one. 
And I figured I would use these colors. So this one, is, they are all Heartland, um, Lion Brand Heartland yarns, Sensationally Soft Premium Acrylic. So this one is um, Capital Reef. And this one's gonna be for Poppy. And she is one year old. So I'm making the year one to two size. And then this is um, Wolf Trap, Wolf Trap for Willow. And she is three, so I'm making the three to four size. Now, my family, we run big, we run large, um, but the kids are still like tiny, so I'm sure these will fit. I'm making them in acrylic. I'm also just gonna crop the sleeves, so it's not gonna be a full sleeve um, situation because kids run around and they're gonna get warm. And I was looking at, I was thinking about how to do it that I'm gonna tie it in. Obviously having matching, like the same style top is gonna be adorable. And I was thinking about how to make the matching um, thing, like matching shirts. Did I want to do a, um, a pleat? So the ruffle, the whole thing of the souffle is you've got this beautiful ruffle that runs across. I was thinking, do I want to do like this ruffle and this and this ruffle and this? But I didn't really like it. So then I thought, I was, I was looking at um, Penrose's um, patterns and one of the samples had an extra little contrast yarn as the bind off. And I thought this, this grey, which is White Sands, I thought it would be perfect because these two go really nicely together and then these two go really <laughs> go really nicely together um wow this sun situation lordy um this is what happens when you podcast right near sunset um yeah so I thought this would be perfect so these are my current projects um I have cast on the smallest for puppy which is the really small one poppy not puppy um and yeah, so I've just started joining in the round um, and I've got to just keep going. This yarn is really easy to knit with, not so easy to purl with. I find it a little bit grabby and a little bit, um, I mean, it's acrylic, so it definitely feels acrylic. Um, and just the way that so this is, I knit English style. I don't know what you call it. I'm a thrower, not a flicker. Um, and I think because of the way that I knit, when I purl, um, I I feel it gripping at the needles a bit more. These are metal needles, they're my chow goo needles. But I do find it, yeah, kind of holding on a bit more, holding on a bit tighter. And I'm not really sure if I like that feeling. Um, but the, the way it's knitting up is beautiful. It's got this awesome sheen to it. It's so lovely and it's really soft. So I love the finish and like just the gauge is beautiful. I have a gauge swatch for this because why not? Um, but it is gorgeous and I'm, I'm really liking this. The finished fabric is beautiful. It's just the knitting with it that I don't love. The other thing I put on Instagram the other day was um, I need to find um, these adorable bunny patterns because, oh my goodness, they're so cute. And... I was trying to think about what bunny pattern to do and I saw, um, oh, what's her name? Oh, I can't remember. I'll put it down the bottom. She has two different bunny patterns and they're like in the most popular for the toys. So again, I'm going to have to bring stuffing over with me, but it'd be fine. Um, so I'm going to knit those, um, two bunnies and I'm going to do, I'm hoping to try and do them with, um, shirts. So Poppy obviously is in the pink um, and then Willow is going to be in the lighter pink or yeah, like beige pink. But then I was thinking Poppy's bunny will be with Willow's top and then Willow's bunny will be with Poppy's top just so that the girls have got something kind of remind, re reminding them of each other, which I thought would be really cute. But I don't know. I might even just go, this is your top. Like look at your bunny, it's got your top. Maybe because they've got the matching strap on their ruffle. I do it that way um but yeah so I was thinking about bunnies and um what to do them in and I thought these so oh you can't even see this is a gray this is like a beige um this is a white and then for an extra little pop of color this mustard yellow so these four are gonna be the bunny colors um they are Four seasons, half and half, 50% acrylic, 50% wool, um, 
100 grams. And I don't actually know how much it takes to make these bunnies, but they needed to be um, worsted weight. So I was just trying to find something that would be like, yeah, like a 10 ply, um, something a bit thicker. Um, and I think they, I think they're it, I think they'll work. Um, and then I also really wanted something that would complement these. So I wanted this palette to go with the girls' tops. And I, I think that's why I've gone with something a bit more muted. Um, also, I don't really like a blue bunny. It feels a bit weird. So while I was there, I also found, and now this is just because it's so cute, these like little Karen cakes. They're called Glitz Cakes. Um, and they're 98% 90, acrylic, 2% polyester. So I'm probably going to complain when I knit them. Um, but they just, they seem so fun. So look at these colours. Purple, green, gold, beige. They're just so much fun. And then this one here is more that purples and golds. So I'm thinking this one is purple and this one is neutral mix. Not neutral. All right, whatever spotlight. So they're made for Spotlight, um, they're called Glitz Cakes. They're 150 grams, um, and they just seem so fun. So I was thinking I might just make something out of them. I was even thinking of doing a school run um, knits and headband um, by Penrose Knits, because obviously I'm on, a, I'm on a roll of knitting all of their stuff. Um, so I'm gonna take these with me in my luggage. I don't know if I'll get up to it, um, because I am planning on knitting two bunnies, two jumpers, two jumpers for the bunnies, um, a mushroom bag, um, just by the time I get there, let alone anything else. Um, and I'm thinking maybe these might be for the mums, um, so for my cousins, but I don't know. So stay posted, we'll see, or I could just make something up because they're just so much fun, they're really cute. Um, and honestly, like what, what needles, this is me thinking, five millimeter needles, so I could really, I'm just basically going to be bringing the same size needles the whole way along. So I really could make something cool with these. I don't know. I'll think about it. Um, but yeah, so these are um, just, I couldn't resist them, basically. These are sneaky little purchases because they're so cute. Um, yeah, so that's all my <laughs> collections. I've got them kind of spread everywhere. Um, and then I've got to figure out what I'm going to bring for myself to knit on. So... I'm thinking I will bring um, my brioche cow um, and I will also bring my advent cardigan, my do not be afraid of shorties cardigan, um, the one that I knit in, did the sleeve inside out. Um, all I've got to do is finish off that sleeve and then I have to do the shawl neck, which is going to be so much fun and super easy. So it is something that I think I can do really quickly. Um, and I can do in any situation. And it's also something like, it's just stuck in it. I don't have to think about it. The brioche one, I do need to think about it a bit more, but I know my pattern. So that, again, it feels a bit natural. Um, that was the one I was actually knitting on when I went to the yarn craft show. Um, let me tell you, walking, talking, and doing brioche um, double decreases, like center decreases, not my favorite thing. Not not my favorite at all, but was awesome. Um, so yeah, so those are my current things that I'm thinking of doing, working on, taking with me. I probably am going to end up shopping anyway. Um, I have not enough money to really go shopping. Um, I'm trying to be smart with my money. Um, but I am going to go meet up with Chloe of Woolen Works and oh guys, my self-control is not very strong. And seeing as I'm already wearing a whole thing made up by her, like oh, you're so pretty. So <laughs> that is where I'm at. It is school holidays officially two or oh, an hour and a half ago. And I am so ready to go for my holiday. Um, I will catch up with you when I get back from Brisbane and Melbourne and I will take a lot of footage and show you what I've been doing and where I've been going. Um, and yeah, I, if you enjoy what you've been watching, um, then please like and subscribe. Um, because it helps me get out a bit more, um, and jump over on Instagram and I'm at waddleand.wool and say hello because I love a good chat. Um, I think that's all I've got to say. Yeah. Have a really wonderful time and I will see you in less than